look at legs. Legs are quite important to us, so we want to understand a little bit about them. So what is a leg? A leg is a hollow, stroke depression, cavity in the earthy surface in which water collects. Legs vary in size, depth, permanency, and mode of formation. What do we mean by here? That legs vary in size. There are some which are bigger, large, and some which are narrow and small. Some which are shallow, that's not we're talking about depth, and others are deep. Others are permanent, like we can talk about Lake Victoria, Lake Tanganyika, Lake Edward. It has been there since time immemorial, since it was formed. And others come during rainy season and they dry up. We shall see oxbow legs drying up. So we are saying mode of formation. Legs vary in the way they are formed. We're going to look at fault legs. <coughs> We're going to excuse me. We are going to look at crustal legs. We're going to look at glacial legs. We're going to look at um, Lava dammed legs. We are going to look at man made legs. Those are the mode of formation. That's what we mean by mode of formation. So they vary. Legs on planet Earth are not formed by one process. No! They vary. Hope we understand that. We move on. So we are saying mode of formation of legs. We are saying there are two basic group of legs. Hmm? Those occupying hollow, produced by earth movements, volcanicity, or erosion, and those produced by damming effect of material, deposited by either ice, water, or lava. Actually, we're saying the most common type here are those produced by the action of ice, as we shall see. So we're in the mode of formation. Number one, fault legs or stroke lift valley legs. These are legs formed or formed at the Lift Valley flow. They are formed due to the faulting process after the formation of the main Lift Valley. Forces of tension and compression cause minor depression, known as grabbings, at the Lift Valley flow, which are filled up with water to form legs. For example, we have in East Africa, we have Lake Tanganyika, the longest and the deepest lake. Is a fault leg or a lift divider leg. We have Edward, George, Manyara, Rukwa, Albert, Kivu, Eyasi, Magadi, Malawi, Trukana, Mission, all found in East Africa. So these are the fault legs, and we are saying they are formed within the lift valley. So all these are found in the Great Lift Valley of Africa, in East Africa. So we are saying, mode of formation. As you look at this illustration up here, it's trying to show us the formation of a Lift Valley. So we are saying, due to compression and tension, plates moves, causing a depression, known as what? A lift valley. So, in the depression at the floor of the lift valley, that's where we get what we call the lift valley legs around here. So, we are saying that the flow happens to get minor depression, which minor depression fill with water, the ones we see here, and then form what we call. Lift valley legs. So it happens after the formation of a lift valley, and we are saying this is all caused by the process of faulting due to tension and compression forces pushing the plates opposite side or squeezing them during compression, pulling them opposite side during tension. And when they happen to cause what we call a lift valley which is a depression. Minor depressions are still formed, known as grabbings, which are filled with water to form a lift valley lake. 
So what we see here uh, is a map to show us some of the examples of the lift valley lakes. The ones we have just talked about, on this other hand, this is the stretch of our Great Lift Valley from the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia down to Tanzania, Malawi. So we are saying, here we have Lake Albert, Lake Edward, George around here, Kivu, Tanganyika, then the Lukwa, then the Malawi, then the Trukana. So these are the Lifty Valley lakes or the Fort Lakes. This one is just helping us to see the satellite view of our Lifty Valley lakes down here. Leave out Victoria, it's not a, a Lifty uh, lift Valley lake, it's not a Fort Lake, but I'm talking about these ones here. You can see that Tanganyika is the longest, actually it's a narrow, but deepest lake in East Africa. Then here, they're trying to bring out this illustration to help us understand. When you look at this phrase of this lake, this is our beautiful Albert. You can see that this is a scalp, and this is also a scalp. So we are saying it is within the Lifty Valley, the Great Lifty Valley, the, the flow of the Lift Valley. So when you look at this, this is a scar, all this area here. And then this one here is also a scar, parallel to each other. But down here, hmm, where you see the lake is the lift valley floor. So it is filled with water forming what we call a lift valley lake or known as a fault lake. So this is the lift valley lake or the faulty lake. We move on to another type. We have what we call crustal warped lakes. These are lakes formed due to warping. So the warping process here leads to the formation of depression due to up warping and down warping. For example, the largest lake in Africa and the second largest in the world, known as Lake Victoria, was formed due to this process. So it is a crustal warped lake. Choga is another one. Umala in Michana, Nakiva, Le Mission. Lake Chad in Africa, Chots in Tunisia. We just want to bring out those other examples. But in East Africa, we have Lake Victoria, we have Choga, we have Wamala, Nakivale, Mission. So these are crustal warped lakes. And what did the formation of these lakes? A process known as warping. Which led to the formation of a depression known as a benson due to up warping and down warping. The warping, up warping and down warping. It's the second largest in the world and the largest in Africa. Volcanic lakes. We have crater and caldera lakes. Crater lakes, these are lakes formed when violent eruption blows off the top of the volcanoes to form a depression, stroke a cavity, which have been filled with water to form volcanic lakes. And below are the examples of these lakes. So we want to see how the crater lakes are formed. So crater is where a cavity happens to form due to the violent eruption that blows off the surface of the crust, causing a cavity, which is later filled with water to form a what? A lake. Caldera is where we see an enlargement of the crater, which later fills with water to form a lake. So these are formed due to volcanic misty. 
Briefly here, let's see how they are formed. Caudal lake formation. As magma chambers extrudes lava into the earth crust, it blows off due to the deep pressure and less pressure near the surface. It blows off, causing massive explosions, which blows off the top of the volcano. After an eruption, the main and magma chamber of the volcano can collapse in, forming a large saturated depression called a caldera. Calderas can be many kilometers in diameter and usually have flat base and steep slopes. Through the time, caldera basin may be filled with water forming caldera lake. This is how a caldera lake is formed. Good. Now here I want to see how they look like physically. So we're going to take a tour on some of the crater lakes found in western Uganda. These are some of the crater lakes in western Uganda. And as we can see in this video, quite a number of these crater lakes found in western Uganda. These are the result of volcanic eruption, which caused the cavity to the crust of the earth which was later filled with water to form these beautiful crater lakes. There are quite a number in western Uganda. Some have salt content in them. As you can see, Katwe, Kasenyi, Nyamnuka. After what we're seeing right now is Nyamnuka in Queen Elizabeth National Park. What you see there is the salt. Now this is Kasenyi in Queen Elizabeth. Those are the salt pans that we talk about. Welcome from that illustration. Lava Dam Lakes. Lava dam lakes, these are lakes formed when a river is filled up with lava flow. The river is therefore forced to pond or collect behind the solidified lava to form a lake. For example, Lake Bunyoni, Bulela, Matevi, Mutanda, Lake Ruhunda. Mention, they're quite a number in Uganda. So what happens here is that during eruption, initially the river was flowing with no interruption but during eruption when magma comes on top later forming what we call lava it is forced to flow as earlier on in the volcanic kind of topic we talked about where we have the best that flows for quite a long distance so as it is flowing it finds its way into the bank of the river and when it is there, it solidifies, thus blocking off the river flow, forcing the river to pond or make a dam behind, thus forming lakes like Lake Bunyoni in Western Uganda, Lake Bulela, Lake Matebi, and Mutanda. So initially it was a river flow, but with the flow of lava, it blocked the river, forcing it to have a back or a pond or a dam, hence forming a lake. So what we see here, these are the, the lava dam lakes in Western Uganda. So let's take a tour. A beautiful one there, formed due to lava flow. As one of the lava dam lakes that we talk about. It's found in the western part of Uganda. That actually created over 10 islands within it. Initially, it was a river flowing, blocked by the lava flow, causing a lake. As the water down behind, forming Lake Bunyoni. Lake Bunyoni supports quite a number of people with its fertile soils and fresh waters. What you see there are people trying to make canoes 
they left them fish and cross across the highlands. Supports fishing and then provides natural water, fresh water that supports quite supports quite a number of people in this region. Welcome back from that. We move on to another type known as glacial lakes. These are formed when glaciers erode the mountain sides and widen the small cracks into large semi-circular depression called quarrels, stroke circles, crumbs, turns. Hence, ice melts to form water, which collects into the depression forming lakes. What is a glacier? A glacier is a sheet of a sheet, not a sheet, a sheet of ice that moves down the slope eroding so we are saying it widens the small cracks into large semicircular depression called circus which are later filled with water to form what we call glacial lakes we have quite a number on mount renzori because it's a snow capped mountain and then on chilimanjaro so the circus the corals and the tans tans Normally we refer them all, we use that term on the volcanic kind of mountains. So we have quite a number of tons, uh, that is uh, on Mount Chilimanjaro and Kenya. So here we are to see just an illustration of what we are talking about. First, down here, glacial retreat on Mount Speak, just what we see here. This is the glacier. Let me try to just briefly uh, highlight it. This is the glacier that we are talking about. So it is retreating, going down here. Coming up to here. So as it is moving, doing that process, what we see here. It is eroding and filling the cracks and causing what we call the circles, the depressions there, the circles, the corals, the crumbs, or the terms. So what we see next here is a view of Lake Batanda. Bata, Batonda. Sorry about that. That is found on Mount Renzoide. Next to that, we have Lake the same. So what we see here, this one here, is our circle. This one that you see here. It's a depression filled with water. So you can see that this is steep areas of mountain. These ones here plus this one coming down and then this one but forming what we call a circle in the center here which is filled with water. That's forming a lake. B is Lake Bigata. You can see here also on B that this is just a depression formed by this glacier movement. Uh, C is Lake Kachope. If you see Lake Kachope very well, you, got, you are going to quite see a number of them. Now one is this one here. That is our circuit. If you go back to see the illustrations very well, you can see this is a true circuit. Hmm? That depression formed by the movement of this glacier. Another one is here. You can see that one there. So they're filled with water from the melting ice, which form what we call the glacial lakes. Then D is Lake Bujuku. Lake Bujuku. What we see here was that depression formed, which was later filled with the water from melting ice. And that's forming our beautiful uh, glacial lake. Now we have Lake Speak here. Then lastly, uh, we have what we call Lake Ruhandika. These are all found on Mount Tiwat, Renzori. Just to give us a view of what we, we, we call as glacial, glacial lakes. These are formed due to the eroding or the movement of the glacier from up, 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 up slope down slope as it erodes it fills the cracks and then breaking uh, the rocks there 
forming hollows or depressions known as circles, crams, quarrels, or turns, and thus fueled by water from melting ice, forming our beautiful glacial glacial lakes. So I want to move on to another one which is known as river and water depositional lakes. So we're going to start with oxbow lakes. These come from river. So river and web deposition lakes. Web is on lakes, oceans, seas. So we start with river. So river we have what we call the oxbow lakes. These are formed in the old stage of a river in which in this stage, sorry, the river starts to develop meanders due to the deposition activities and the meanders neck tend to grow, hence breaking off to form a strengthened new course or strengthened new course, leaving behind an oxbow lake. We have quite a number of these rivers along River Zoe, Zara, Yala, Rizi, Malaba, Semiriki, Rufiji, mentioned by a few. So I want to see how these uh, legs are formed in this illustration. Oxbow legs are formed in the last stage of the river due to the meanders that come about with the weight of the load in the river. It forms meanders, as you see in this, those are meanders. It starts to deposit off the material, which actually causes next, which next break off from oxbow legs. What you see there is an oxbow leg. So in this illustration, we're trying to see how it forms the next, which later connect to form a new stream, leaving the oxbow isolated forming an oxbow lake. So what we can see there is an oxbow lake which later dry. We move on. Web deposition lakes. We have what we call lagoons. So initially we're looking at the oxbow lakes, now we're on lagoons. What we're looking at as oxbow is by a river. Now this is by either lake or ocean. Or sea. These are formed as a result of marine deposition due to wave action. Waves deposit sand, which may encycle part of the ocean uh, to create a calm water known as a lagoon. For example, Lake Nabugabo, that is in Lake Victoria and Massacre. So this happens that at the shore of the lake, what we call the beach, at the shores, due to the wave deposition kind of process, it tends to deposit sand, hence blocking off a certain portion of the lake at the shores which forms what we call the calm waters known as a lagoon. So this one here is to help us understand. Here we want to see how they are formed. What you see in this is that now this web deposition, the webs are moving. They are moving. Uh, as they are moving here in this direction, this this other direction here that we have seen, they are going to isolate this portion here, which later form what we call a lagoon. Slowly, the sand starts to come up, being deposited, and it is 
cutting off this area. As it is cutting off this area, it forms our lake or a lagoon. So what you see is calm water and has been cut off from the main lake. Now what we see here is the real picture of the lagoon. This is our lagoon. This is the calm water. Now on this other side here is the sand. Hope you see that. That's the sand. That's the sand up the other side deposited by waves. But the main lake is the other side. That's forming what we call a what? A lagoon. Lastly, we have what we call man-made lake. These are formed by damming of a river for irrigation and other purposes. For example, Lake Chibimba, Nebujiri, Lake Chidamvuma, and Kabakaz Lake. These are made by man, by digging a depression, damming of a river. So forcing a river to flow into a dam created by a man. So these are man-made lakes. And we have below some of the examples. So the white dam actually are set up for purposes of irrigation, purposes of controlling floods in a certain area and uh, water reserves. So that's set up by man. They are not naturally formed like what we've been seeing up. The first modes of formation are naturally formed. But the last one here is man-made. It's artificial. So they are formed by damming of a river for irrigation and other purposes. So what do we mean by damming of a river? So you create a depression close to the river, forcing the river to flow its waters into the dam. Hence creating a man-made lake. So we want to look at the importance of lakes. Number one, they modify the climate through the formation of convection rainfall by recharging the atmosphere with this water vapor that condenses to form clouds. Chumlonimbas, hence forming convection rainfall. Next we're saying they act as tourist attractions. Allow tourism. <laughs> So much. So, people go to the beaches of the lakes just as a tourist attraction. Next, lake shores contain fertile alluvial soils which promote agriculture, for example, at the shores of Lake Victoria. These alluvial soils are fertile and they promote agriculture. Next, some lakes contain minerals like salt. So the ash, sun and clay, hence promoting economic activities. A salt lake cutway, Magadi, which is mined and actually sold and we use it as an ingredient too. Uh, so the ash is used to make glasses. And then sun and clay, construction purposes, as we shall see. Lakes support fishing activities, which you and me actually eat fish. It's, it's rich in proteins. So that's how great these futures are to mine. Water transport on lakes, promoting international trade between countries, for example, in East Africa, we have what we call Lake Victoria, it's a big, big, largest lake, and it promotes international kind of trade. Uh, people from Tanzania crossing over using water transport to Uganda, Port Bell, and then we have Kisumu from Kenya crossing over to Uganda. Lake provide water for irrigation for example Lake Victoria it's a good one it provides water uh, we've talked about uh, 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 irrigation uh, water for other purposes we can say domestic and industrial use here so they provide fresh water which is quite important for irrigation for example Lake Victoria provides water for Kakila sugar plantation that is in ginger 
Uh, the papyrus reads on the shores of lakes promote craft industry uh, where we see people making uh, mats and baskets. Uh, next, source of sand and clay for construction and manufacture of ceramics, the nice pots, uh, the nice kind of uh, 